Thank you. 
beautiful playing. Thank you. Um, what would you say the the beginning? What would you say um, the character is of the the beginning of this piece? Or if you had to also define like the movement as a whole, what what kind of images do you see? Yeah, yeah, okay, so free and happy. Yeah, I like that. Um, it's the beginning, let's take the beginning, right? Agreed, right? Free, free happy, um, unencumbered, just joyful, maybe like opening the windows on a, on a clear day or something, right? And that's always the image I have is like, Oh, opening the curtains. You get up out of bed and you're just opening the curtains and it's the beginning of this piece. So um, I wonder if we can get a bit more of that side of things um, to come through to us. Do, would you mind just trying once the, the very opening? <laughs> I'd love for you to try once, just, just humor me and just try the, the opening with open strings. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Now can we try the same thing with, with the notes but with no change in the bow from what you just did? So. Yeah, so would you say, um, if you're looking for a relaxed, open, carefree sound, what sort of vibrato would you want to use? Looser. Looser vibrato, maybe, right? Yeah, so I think everything has to go together here. You have this sort of feeling of... What you did when you played open strings, I think, was used just a more kind of arm in the bow stroke, so it wasn't too... We can get a bit, um, you know, the left hand is doing stuff and then the, the bow arm wants to follow. But I would love for you to think about doing the opposite. Is like the more notes you have in the left hand, actually the, the more um, sort of larger motion in the right hand you have. So. I think that's how we really get a true legato. Um, instead of you hear how that's a bit more kind of broken up so I think it has to do with, with all of these combined you have this um, first and foremost this very smooth sort of right hand and then in the left hand the vibrato isn't as tight as it would be in some of the more kind of you know, that sort of, those sort of sections are maybe a bit more charged or electric, but here I think use the resonance that you've created in the bow to determine what your vibrato is going to sound like, if that makes sense. Do you want to try it one more time? Great, 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 great. Um, one more thing in this opening. That note, which is always on the fourth finger, which is really annoying, um, but give that note a bit more love, because I think, I think the phrase is actually, you know, if you, if you think of the, um, or if you sing through the phrase, right? I think it's actually opening into that E. So even though it's on a fourth finger, I 
just try to have the same kind of open, free resonance on that note as well. And same with this one. Maybe it's going into a different direction than the opening. Maybe this one is going away. But I think you still need some love on that, on that note. It's just that both of them are just so beautiful. Do you want to try it one more time? Keep, it was so nice when you played. I, I really felt that the arm was, was moving. And then as it gets more intense, I think your, your right arm wants to, wants to go back, right? Do, do, that, do that sort of thing. So I would still... Keep the left hand as the one that's doing all of the sort of shimmery colors, but the right hand is the one that's almost like your voice, right? So it's like you really want that one stream of breath coming out of even the, the bow changes at the top. Um, yeah, let's see, where's a good place? Uh, how about right there? string I know there's a tendency to like since it's hard to get up there you want to crunch in the right hand too I think just keeping that resonance like always have the right the right arm flowing so that you create this almost an endless stream which you did at the beginning I think that was really beautiful um, but just make sure you you don't lose that just really seek this sort of smoothness in the right in the right arm. You want to try that one more time uh, from. different from right but I, th I think we want to hear that it's related like we want to hear that it's sort of a shadow of the beginning um, so maybe the vibrato again isn't too isn't too disruptive but it's more similar to the beginning and your job is really just to find that sort of extra shaded D-string color from, from the beginning, which was so open, right? This one is maybe a bit more warm. You want to try that one?
great, great, great. That was that was much better, I think. <laughs> that passage, I think, also just the more notes you have in the left hand, the more you have to concentrate on the right hand being so super smooth. Right, just I'm hearing a bit. You know, it's it's easy to think that oh, we need clarity in the in the left hand. So I'm going to really try to enunciate every note. I would think the opposite. Right, um, same thing. All those passages. It's really just super, super smooth in, in the right hand. So, so we avoid this feeling that each string is actually um, a separate sort of level in the right hand or in the elbow, but rather it's a constant sort of um, infinity shape, right? We have like a figure eight um, all through, through the four strings. You wanna try that um, maybe? And I would say, you know, one thing about this opening is that to me, the phrase doesn't end until there, right? So we have this whole, it's almost like a fantasy, like a, a rhapsody. And you have all these sorts of cadenza type things in there, right? Uh, even this sort of, I think, free. The orchestra isn't doing that much. And finally, we end the passage, right? But I think I would love to hear that whole first phrase as one thing. And for me, maybe the, the quieter passages, um, starting here, feel a little bit too introverted or something. So I would still still have this feeling that you're you're singing something to us, you know. It's this long, long, long phrase that doesn't end for for quite a while. Um, great. Yeah, should we go on a little bit? Just from the, the top. I don't know if you would agree with this, but I feel like one of the things that is interesting about this movement is that it has all of these sorts of moments for the violin to be alone and doing its sort of its thing, right? You have this, um, you know, what I just talked about. Those are all kind of free cadenzas. And then... There's really not that much going on in the orchestra. So I feel like it's up to you to give the character that this passage needs, right? Maybe it's a... Um,
do you see it as more or less um, relaxed than the opening? Um, relaxed. Less relaxed, right? Yeah, so I think there's a sense of urgency here. And then we're back to the opening, right? But I think it's up to you to create this drama because up until this point, there hasn't really been that much drama. <laughs> so I think, I think you should um, really own, own the drama. You wanna go one more time there? I mean, this, this passage also, if we don't hear um, some of these, these beginnings of patterns, then it's, it's kind of hard for us to, to understand what's going on. Uh, All these things, I think it's easy to, for us to feel like it's just a, just a running train of 16th notes, right? But I think there is... It would be really nice to hear the structure of the passage with some of these anchor points, right? And if you don't hear it, we're not gonna hear it. So, um, do you wanna play that passage just one more time? And now, you know, feel free to add the accelerando back in. But just as long as you can hear all the notes, you know, and it's um, the E string never really has an issue projecting. But some, sometimes, if we have notes on the lower strings, that's that's where the issue lies. Um, yeah, excellent job. Thank you so much for playing. <laughs>